Hello Church family, welcome to day number two of our devotions leading up to Easter. If you missed yesterday's video, Pastor Dwayne talked about Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And so if you missed that, be sure to go back and watch that video. Today's devotion comes out of John chapter 12 verses 1 through 11. And this event uh, takes place one day prior to that. And so in John chapter 12 verses 1 through 11, we read this. Six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at table. Mary therefore took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, he who was about to betray him, said, why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this, not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. And Jesus said, leave her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor you will always have with you, but you do not always have me. And when the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came not only on account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death as well, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. As we read that passage, uh, some words that come to mind uh, revolve around worship, what worship is and what worship is not. And some of the things that we see uh, demonstrated in this passage uh, that uh, tell us what worship is all about are words like gratitude and sacrifice and witness. Where do we see gratitude? Well, we see gratitude in uh, Martha's example. Martha prepared a dinner for Jesus, uh, and she did so out of gratitude. If you remember uh, a previous story about Martha and Mary, uh, you may remember that Martha in that story was complaining to Jesus. Uh, Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet and listening to his teaching, uh, but Martha was busy serving, and she was distracted by that. And she went on to complain to Jesus, why is my sister not helping me? And Jesus uh, taught her then uh, a good lesson, and she seemed to have, have grown in that. And in this story, we don't see her complaining. Rather, she's serving uh, not uh, because she had to, but because she wanted to, out of gratitude. Why gratitude? Well, uh, as you know uh, from these uh, verses, Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. Her uh, brother had died and was now raised back to life by Jesus and so she made this dinner and prepared this meal for him uh, because she was thankful for what Jesus had done in raising her brother from the dead. Rather than being busy for the sake of busyness, she was focused now on the who and on the why. She was serving Jesus. Secondly, we see that Mary was sacrificial. Mary was sacrificial in that she poured out this precious and expensive perfume on Jesus' feet and goes on to wipe uh, Jesus' feet with her hair. And that catches us off guard. It caught the disciples off guard in that culture to, uh, that day as well because uh, that was uh, a great act of humility. Uh, the washing of people's feet uh, was, a, was a dirty and a messy job. Uh, and the fact that she did so with her hair uh, demonstrated great humility. To wipe uh, anyone's feet would have been uh, a, a, a chore for a servant uh, because people's Feet back in that day were dirty with uh, the grime and the germs uh, of the city streets and the places people traveled. And so that was a great act of humility that she uh, blessed Jesus with. And it was out of uh, pure adoration and worship. But then we also see that she sacrificed something very costly and something uh, very uh, great, uh, of, of great expense in that day. And that was the perfume. Uh, we see that it cost uh, 300 denarii, or it could have been sold for up to 300 denarii. Uh, that's how expensive it was. For uh, context, the denarii in that day was a day's wage. So uh, 300 denarii, that's pretty close to a year's worth of wages. It was something that was very costly. Uh, but she poured out this uh, anointment uh, on Jesus' feet, uh, washing uh, his feet with her hair uh, out of sacrifice and out of love. She did so cheerfully and out of humility, and it blessed Jesus uh, tremendously. Even though uh, the disciples would get upset about it, uh, he defended her, and he rebuked them. So we see uh, that Martha was grateful. We see Mary uh, was sacrificial. 
uh, and maybe uh, we might uh, men uh, mention Lazarus here. Uh, Lazarus uh, fits into the story as a witness. Lazarus was a living testimony, uh, if you will, of what God had done in his life. He was dead, but now he had been brought back to life by Jesus. And his testimony, uh, his life's witness, uh, was pointing people to Jesus. Uh, he uh, is not mentioned as doing anything necessarily specific in this passage other than reclining with Jesus. Uh, but his life was a witness to other people. Uh, people were coming to Jesus, uh, recognizing that he was uh, indeed the Messiah uh, because of Lazarus, uh, because of his testimony. So we see that uh, example of gratitude, of sacrifice, and of witness, how those things uh, are forms of true and of pure worship. But we also see what worship is not in this passage. We see uh, selfishness in the example of Judas. We see that Judas criticized Mary's worship because of his own wrong motives. We learn uh, in these verses that he was responsible for the money bag in the group. And, and John points out, uh, writing this after the fact, uh, that he had even been known to be a thief uh, to steal from the money bag. And so maybe uh, his intentions in mentioning this uh, idea about selling this costly perfume to the poor was uh, so that he could keep some of the proceeds for himself. Uh, maybe uh, he had already made up his mind that he was going to betray Jesus, and this was his uh, chance to uh, strike it good before uh, he got out of the group. Uh, we don't know, but we just know for certain that his, his motives were not pure. Uh, he was selfish. Mary, we know, worshipped Jesus uh, because she had pure motive. Uh, she was sacrificial. Uh, she loved Jesus, though she wasn't in any way embarrassed uh, about uh, giving this great uh, sacrifice of worship to the Lord that she loved. A couple questions that we could consider as we uh, close. Uh, one is this, is who do you relate most to in this passage? Maybe it's Martha, maybe it's Mary or Lazarus. Uh, who do you relate most to in this passage? Second question we can ask ourselves is, what does worship look like in your life? Maybe you won't uh, ever have the opportunity to uh, pour out perfume on Jesus' feet and wash his feet uh, but you do have other ways to worship Jesus in your life because uh, worship is so much less about the what uh, and even maybe the how. Uh, so much of this about the who, Jesus, and the why, the motivation behind why we worship him. And so I encourage you in that to, to live worship every single day because you can. Worship is not so much about uh, just singing songs to him. That's one uh, form or expression of worship that we know about today. Uh, but worship uh, really boils down to the way that we live our lives. And so remember that Jesus uh, loved us sacrificially. Uh, we know uh, as we prepare for Easter that that's uh, what we're trying to set our minds toward, uh, that Jesus died in our place uh, because he loved us so much. And not only that, uh, but we have hope because he rose from the dead. And so my prayer for us is that we would remember that sacrifice, remember the, the love that he has shown us and that he has sacrificed for us. And that as we prepare for Easter, that we wouldn't become distracted or discontent, uh, but that we would be able to worship Jesus in the way that we live our lives. Remember to do so out of a grateful heart. So I hope that uh, encourages you. I hope that's a blessing to you. And God bless you. Let's talk about Jesus. The King of Kings is He. The Lord of Lords Supreme. Throughout eternity, the great I am, the way, the truth, the life, the door. Let's talk about Jesus more and more. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? I've such seniors have heard, it's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Jesus says to me, Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is He, saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His name, precious name. Oh, how sweet hope of Joy of hell, precious name, oh how sweet, how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven is 
wonderful place filled with glory and praise. I want to see my Savior's face. Heaven is a wonderful place, but until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy I'll carry on. Until the day my eyes behold the city. Until the day, God.